Welcome into Soda City Living. I'm your host, Madeline Stewart. You might know we're in the midst of our Bars and Brews special. Don't worry, we'll get to that in just a bit. First, we're highlighting a team of experts at MUSC in Columbia. Dr. Sid Morrison tells us about signs, symptoms, trends, and treatments that you should keep in mind, especially during the month of March for Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Here's more. Hi, I'm Dr. Sidney Morris, and I go by Sid, and I was uh, born here in Columbia, South Carolina, and went to medical school at University of Florida, and then did my uh, surgery training down in Tulane in New Orleans, and then a colorectal fellowship at the Auctioner Clinic. Our group uh, consists of four people. We are now with Medical University of South Carolina, and practice primarily out of their downtown location. MUSC has brought up the level of providers that they employ and harbor under their umbrella. So we have a higher quality of doctors and they're, they've been very picky about who they hire and bring on board. I think they're giving us an opportunity to improve the care provided to our Columbia Midlands area. Colon and rectal cancer is also called cancer of the large intestine. It's the third leading cancer in the United States and also the third leading cause of cancer deaths. And it's one of the preventable cancers. I say that in the sense that it, the deaths are preventable and in some cases possibly even developing the cancers are preventable. So as we screen for certain cancers like breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer and cigarette smokers, all, all Americans should be screened for colon and rectal cancer because if we catch it early, those people can live a normal life. Since we've started being more aggressive with colonoscopies, which has been for two to three decades. At first, we hypothesized that that might reduce the death rate from colon cancer, but it was never proven. We now have actually data that proves that we have impacted the deaths in our country from colorectal cancers. And this is particularly in the older age group patients. Um, and that's great news. It kind of shows us that, hey, all the advertising we've been doing is actually working and people are coming and having tumors either prevented by removal of polyps or diagnosed at an early stage where they're curable. Unfortunately, we're seeing greater numbers of younger patients, less than 50 years old, develop advanced colon and rectal cancers, and that number is growing. Right now, 90% of cancers of the colon and rectum are usually in people 50 years and up in age but about 10% are less than 50, and like I say, that number is growing, and that's awfully tragic to have young people develop a cancer that potentially costs them their lives and never expect it to occur in such a young person. In a scientific sense, we know what causes colon cancer. In general, it's the mutations of the DNA that line the cells of the large intestine. So your cells of your large intestine have little mucus glands and just like a fish has mucus, the inside of your intestine has mucus that protects the bowel from the environment which contains lots of bacteria. What happens that we don't quite understand is why these lining cells, which are glandular secreting cells, go and have a mutation within the DNA. And they grow rapidly and they form little growths of what we call adenomatous tissue or polyp. So we believe that it takes a series of genetic mutations to go from a benign lining of the intestine to a polyp to a cancer. We believe that sequence takes five to 10 years. So there's plenty of time if caught early in the polyp stage for us to potentially even prevent the cancers from developing. Or if we can catch them in the early cancer stage before they're symptomatic, our cure rate goes up extremely high. So first let's talk about the screening. So all, it used to be age 50 was the proper age to start getting screened for colon cancer. Now there's exceptions to that and even there have been even in the past and that would be a first degree family relative. You would want to start 10 years earlier than the age of their diagnosis. So that would be your mom, your dad, or your sibling, okay? Or a genetically identified inheritance pattern 
only 10% of colon cancer are considered genetically inherited in that regard, and most of those patients will know because they have younger family members that have developed colon cancer, and hopefully they have been educated that they need to start their screening earlier. But in general, uh, at age 50 was what we had been doing, but due to this change in demographics where we're seeing greater numbers of younger patients, we are now moved the screening down to age 45. So we're trying to get screening started at age 45, and that's in every single person, even if they're asymptomatic. And the screening could be done several ways. The best screening test known to all is considered what we call the gold standard would be a colonoscopy. If the colonoscopy is negative, then you don't have to have that test but every 10 years. The second best test is the popular stool test for DNA changes called FIT tests. And that test is either read as positive or negative. Now if it's positive, then you have to have a colonoscopy because that puts you in a very high risk category. What that test is saying to you is, boy, there's a very high probability that there's either an advanced polyp or a cancer in my large intestine. The only way for us to confirm that is with a colonoscopy. You can do everything perfectly in your life and be a vegetarian and exercise every day and never smoke and have no family history of colon cancer and still get colon cancer. And the rates aren't significantly lower for those patients. They're maybe a touch lower, but not low enough to avoid screening. In contrast to screening the asymptomatic patients, once again, screening is for all of us without any symptoms. On the other hand, if a patient of any age is having symptoms, which we're going to go over here, that needs to be reported to their doctor and they need to be checked by a gastroenterologist or a colorectal surgeon. The primary symptoms would be unexplained bleeding and a change in the bowel habits. And if that were to occur even in a 20-year-old or even in a teenager, it needs to be evaluated because we're seeing greater numbers of people at younger age present with colon cancer. Everyone needs to get screened starting at age 45, discuss it with your health care provider, your physician, your nurse practitioner, or your PA. And this, it doesn't really matter how you get screened. Any form of screening is better than no screening. Okay? You can save your own life by doing that. And you know, nobody likes to be told, oh my goodness, I had a colonoscopy and they found something. But what's worse, not knowing and having it found two to three years later when the patient is symptomatic and the cancer has had a chance to grow and possibly spread or disseminate into other organs.